what kind of um, differential equation, sorry, what kind of function are we going to do here? So we're going to define p as our quantity that's changing, right? And what I'm going to demonstrate for you is that the exponential equation, a particular form of the exponential equation, satisfies all of this. So let's think about growth first. <clears throat> How are we going to define this? Now, we can just start with something very, very simple like this, right? Except this is very specific. This only works in the exact case where the rate of change you're growing at is exactly equal to, like this is, this is the rate of change, right? This is my F dash column, is exactly equal to your population, right? Or whatever it is that you're growing. But we might be off by some kind of constant. So what would be different with this to turn the derivative into not exactly the same thing, but a multiple of the same thing. How would I have to change this original function? It's gonna be it's gonna be a chain rule situation, right? Because where this, if I slap a k there, right, where that would come from is the due of the inside function. Does that make sense? So I would really want a k up there, which would put a k there. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna change one more thing as well. I'm going to add this guy out the front, and I'll explain it him in a second. Okay. So what this is here is saying my population is defined as an exponential function, but I've got these two things to muck about with. Number one, um, we've got k being a positive real number. Uh, this is often called the growth constant, so it defines how quickly things are going. And then you've got this guy, p0, which defines not how fast you're growing, but where you start. Right? So if you want to think about it, don't have to write this, but if you want to think about it like a linear function, right? a linear function can be uh, unambiguously defined by its gradient, which is how fast it's growing. It's kind of like this guy. right? And it's y-intercept, where it begins. right? When x equals 0, what are you equal to? And that's what this corresponds to. Okay? I suppose or another way you could write this is that, and this is why it's called p0. Right? P at naught, right? If I put in t time equals zero, that's going to equal p naught, right? Because what happens to this part here, the exponential part, where time is zero? It just becomes one, right? E to the power of naught, anything to the power of naught, is just one. So you just get left with this guy. So that's why we designate him p naught. Um, other times, you will see it written um, as this. And they mean the same thing. They're just substituting capital A. It's like, well, it's the first letter. It's where you begin. It's just the name of the constant. Okay? So we want to demonstrate, and this will often be the first part of an HSC exponential growth and decay question. We just want to demonstrate, like, where do we pluck this out of the air from? How can we justify that it's worth using in a situation like this? And it's very, very simple. To prove that this satisfies the differential equation, All I need to do is start from this, and this tells me, well, if you differentiate, you ought to get something at the other end. So all I'm going to do is take this expression and differentiate, right? So I'll take p and differentiate with respect to time, okay? So let's have a look here. Uh, p naught is just a constant, so I'm going to leave that constant coefficient out the front. What happens when I'm differentiating e to the kt? We just have a look at this. Yeah, I'm going to have the derivative of the inside and the derivative of the outside, well, e to whatever, just gives you e to whatever, right? All I need to do is slightly rearrange this, and you can see, ta-da, I have that result that I was trying to show, okay? So this is very straightforward. It almost seems trivial, but it's important because it's kind of like, well, this is what I know. Where did this come from? How can you justify that this is worth using? in this kind of situation, and the answer is, look, if you do the substitution, it works. Now, just as a side note, differentiation is only one half of the calculus puzzle, right? What's the other half? What's the other side of differentiation? It's integration, right? Now, I do not advise that you use integration to prove that this satisfies the differential equation because differentiation is so simple, it's so obvious. However, it's still good to know, and it's not, it's not hard to wrap your head around. It's just so much longer and less efficient that you might as well always use this. But let's think about this, right? How would I go about proving that this satisfies this by using integration instead of differentiation? What would I do? 
Can you take it? You can shift stuff around. I am going to have to shift some stuff around. Uh, what I'm, the, the question really is, what function will I have to integrate to sort of get here? Okay, do you want to give me a suggestion? So you move the pencil to the other side, and then you make it a long function. Are you starting from here? Um, yeah. Yes? Probably shouldn't be, but... You can start from here, it's fine. I'm going to suggest though, that if I want to use integration, not differentiation, right? This is probably not going to be a great place to begin, right? Because I'm not going to end up with an expression with dp on dt in it, am I? Right? If I integrate this, there's no way you can get a dp on dt out of that. You're going to get uh, p prime, whatever that happens to be, okay? If I want to differentiate, I'm going to start here and I'll get a dp on dt, right? If I want to integrate, I shouldn't start from there, I should start from here, shouldn't I? This is where I should begin. And integrating that, dp on dt will be there, and there will be the, the p that I'm after, okay? So here's where I'm going to begin. Um, you can put this on the side here. <clears throat> How do I do this by integration instead of differentiation? I'm going to begin with this statement because I know it to be true. I know it to be true. Now, it looks a little weird at the moment, so I'm just going to rework it so that I can integrate according to an appropriate variable which is the weird part. Watch this. If I divide through by p and multiply through by dt, I've told you before that's a little bit of a dicey thing to do, but in this case it will work because that dt is not hanging there on its own. It's actually you know, a multiple of something. So this is how we did you know, integration in areas in the first place. All I've done is just rearrange ever so slightly. He's gone over there, dt's gone over there. But now, because I have dp here and dt here, I can integrate both sides with respect to these variables. Do you see that? We're used to taking two sides of an equation and integrating with respect to the same variable, right? But here, the variables of integration are already supplied. Hmm. Okay, what's happening on the left hand side? Yeah, 1 over p, right, with respect to p, that's just the derivative of the log function, right? The natural log function. Uh, it's got a constant on it, but so does the indefinite integral on the right-hand side and two constants together is just one big constant or a small constant. So I'm going to leave off the constant until I have the right-hand side. You'll see why in a second. Now I've got k, which is a constant. What happens when I integrate it with respect to t? It's just kt. And, and now I'm ready to put my constant here. Okay. Right, now where am I trying to head? I'm trying to get to something like this, right? Last time I started here and differentiated and I ended there. And now I'm going in the exact opposite direction. So I started there, I'm trying to end here. What shall I do? Can you go e to the power of kt plus c equals two? Yeah, absolutely. This is a log equation, which we know is just another way of framing an exponential equation, right? So this is log base e, right? So it means p is e to the power of kt plus c. Do you agree with that? I'm almost there, aren't I, right? Uh, using my index laws, I recognize that e to the something plus something, that's actually a product, isn't it? Okay. So I'm going to write it in this order. Because look, look, look where I'm heading. Here I am, right? So I'm just going to call p naught, I'm just going to call it that. This is just a constant, right? e is a constant, c is some constant that I don't know. But that must be the starting position. Okay, because that, when you put in time zero, that's your initial value. So now you can see why differentiation is clearly a superior way of doing this, right? You still end up with the same result, but dramatically faster. You don't have to make this weirdo kind of leap. Uh, I mean, it's all true, but there's no reason why you wouldn't do that. It's much more efficient, okay? So, uh, would you open up, I believe it's 7G, 7G. And let's just do one example together so you can see the way this works. This is the same the same chapter you've been looking at. So I think that's HSC. Yeah, sure. Um, I won't do it now. I'll, I'll come and sit next to you and do it. Start from. See this thing? See this? Right. This is um, e to the power of log a to the s. 
Do you see it? Do you see it? So this is e to the x, okay? Right? And you can differentiate that because that's e to the power of something. Yeah? See if that was, is enough for Yeah, yeah. Do you see it? Uh, no, I'll do this. Oh, sorry, I forgot one thing. One, one thing. Uh, this is all about growth. This is all about growth. Okay. So this is my growth equation. And you can see it's got a slightly different form. But if I want decay instead of growth, remember, this is what a decay situation looks like. Okay. Well, what's the relationship between these two? Geometrically, what's the relationship? I, geometrically, I have flipped horizontally. And horizontally for me in this context means with respect to t, right? So all I have to do to turn this growth equation into a decay equation is to slap a minus sign right there, right? So p equals p naught e to the minus kt. And you can see again, I can verify this very easily by differentiation. Your derivative of the inside function will be negative k, which comes out the front and everything else stays the same, okay?